value streams. I've got a quick question for you. Do you know what your organization's value streams are? Do you know how your organization creates value for your customers and your users? Do you know how important those value streams are compared to each other? And do you know how much or how little everything your people are doing right now ties into those value streams? Do you know how much of what you're currently doing is not directly relevant to creating value for your customers or your users? You would be surprised, maybe, maybe you wouldn't, I don't know. You'd be surprised how many leaders of organizations that I work with that would answer no to some or all of those questions. And that's quite worrying, not just worrying for me, but more worrying for them, right? So I'm interested. Do you know? Just take a minute and think. Do you know? I remember back many years ago, I was working at an organization who were really struggling, well, just struggling in general, really. Um, they made some effort to try and become a little bit more agile, um, try and introduce more transparency, self-management, cross-functionality and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, they, I mean, they were still in the early stages. And I would say that leadership was starting to lose heart. And one of the reasons they were losing heart is because their project management office had a regular dashboard and regular meetings to review progress of all of the projects that were ongoing at that time. And over the last few months, more and more of the projects that were ongoing in that organization were moving from green, where everything was on track and underway, to amber, where there are a few issues that we might need to work out, but you know, things are recoverable, to red, which is danger. This project is in serious risk of not being delivered. And the, the project management office decided to call all of the project managers together and effectively ask, what the heck is going on here? And the project manager's response was, well, we just haven't got enough people. You know, um, it's, we're really struggling with resources because that's what they called people, resources. And the PMO said, effectively, ah, not accepting that as an excuse because you've got more people now than you did have three months ago, six months ago, and things were on track then, so try again. And the project manager says, no, seriously, um, we, okay, we've got more people, but we don't have the right people. We don't have the people that we need, the skills that we need. They're all tied up elsewhere. We've got all these dependencies across the projects. Uh, and and you know, we, we, we just can't get our work done. And they didn't know what to do. So what did they do? They asked the Agile coaches who had been trying to make some changes to the way that things were done, things were organized, things were structured within the organization. They'd been talking about a lot of Agile things for a while, but not really getting very far. And the PMO said, okay, Agile people, You've been saying Agile's amazing and Agile's the answer to everything. Agile's the silver bullet for ages. They hadn't, okay. But there were some people in the PMO who, let's shall we say, were a little bit skeptical. I'm not gonna say they wanted Agile to fail, but a little bit skeptical. They said, okay, so you guys have been saying Agile's great for ages. Here's your chance. How are you gonna solve this problem? And I'll be brutally honest, as part of that Agile coaching team, we didn't know. We didn't know how to solve that problem. But what we did know was that whenever we had a problem, our answer always involved a big room, lots of people, lots of sticky notes, lots of Sharpies, lots of pizza, lots of caffeinated drinks. So we got the biggest room we could find. We got as many people from the project community as we could together and some leadership. And we said, okay, we need to solve this problem. First question, because what we do in an agile way is we prioritize. What is our most important project? And there was a lot of argument, a lot of pizza being flown around, lots of people shouting and standing out. And eventually, so one of the membership of the leadership team said, everybody, shh, shh. My project is the most important because if this one doesn't get delivered, 
Not only will we get fined, but our CEO has a risk of going to jail. And I'm not going to be the one that sends our CEO to jail. Everybody else in the room said, hmm, fair play. Okay, we have our highest priority project. Now, the next question is, who do we need to get that project done? And of the people in the room, some people put their hands up. Yeah, we need you. Okay, hand up. All right, all of you people with your hands up, you need to leave right now. Your work is too important to be coming to meetings like this. Get back to work. So off they went. Somebody said, but, 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 but we need them. Well, you can't have them. They're on a really, really important project. Next thing, what's our second highest priority project? Again, the argument, the pizza flying around the room. Eventually someone comes up with something. Okay, highest priority. So who do we need to get that second highest priority project done? Hands up, boom, go. Yeah, but we also need, yeah, but you can't have them because they're on a more important project. You can have Jeff. But we don't want Jeff. Jeff's not as good as Dave. But it's Jeff or nothing. Okay, Jeff, welcome to the team. Good to see you. Thank you. Love your work. Off you go. Somebody else says, yeah, but Jeff's on our project. Yeah, not now. He's not. Third priority, fourth priority. Let's keep going. We couldn't even staff half of our projects. Okay. We knew that. We didn't have a clarity around not only our value streams, but we didn't have a clarity around our importance of our value streams. So we were just trying to keep people busy as much as possible, please as many customers as possible. And that was getting us into all sorts of problems. So I'm sure that won't apply to you and your organization, which is great news. But let's just say maybe, maybe you could benefit from having some greater clarity, greater focus on your value streams. What can you do? Okay, three things. Firstly, think of who your customers and your users actually are. Now then, first of all, customers and users are not necessarily the same thing, so just work that out. You might also need to think about who your customers, customers are. As that quote from all the president's men goes, follow the money. All right, keep going until you find your actual customers and users. And then, once you know who they are, think of what they actually want. Now, that might sound like a strange thing for me to say, but what I'm saying there is don't think about what you currently offer them or sell them, but what their actual real problems are that they want solving. Now, hopefully, your solutions will match up with those problems. Brilliant, great market fit. But... Look at what their real problems are. A lot of organizations don't actually do that. What are they willing to pay for to get resolved? And then if you really want to take this further, you can start reorganizing and optimizing around these value streams. And just as importantly, stopping some things that are not directly contributing to value creation. Now, if you struggle with the whole stopping some things, Maybe have a look at my little article on saying no politely or being much more ruthless in my product mastery course. So I hope that helps you understand what value streams are a little bit and gives you something to start identifying and then focusing on your value streams. Let me know how you get on.